Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. It's time for an update on the MSI MPG 321 URX now that I've been using it exclusively as a productivity monitor for the last three months. We're going to talk about burn in, firmware updates, and of course, some general usage impressions. Now, if you missed the first update after one month of usage, I'd recommend going back and checking that video out just so you get an idea of the setup I'm using and why I've decided to use MSI's 4K 240Hz QD OLED gaming monitor as my workstation display. But basically, the idea here is to perform a real-world test of OLED longevity in the worst possible configuration, effectively burning in the display on purpose. I swapped my 32-inch 4K IPS LCD for this new QD OLED and changed nothing else about my setup, so no dark mode or screen savers or anything like that, and that's to see whether OLED monitors really can be used as LCD equivalent productivity displays long term. Before looking at the burn-in results, I wanted to discuss the latest firmware update for the 321URX that was released a few weeks ago. This firmware, version FW.010, is available through MSI's website and requires you to install it through their gaming intelligence software. I'm really not a fan of these utilities, so usually I install them, update the firmware, then uninstall the entire app, and repeat that cycle for any future updates. In any case, the update process is relatively straightforward once the app is installed. Now, MSI has looked to update quite a number of aspects to the monitor with this firmware, and even added some features to bring it more on par with competing monitors. For example, there's now a DSC switch in the firmware, like the ASUS model, along with the switch to turn off the power LED. Those are handy quality of life improvements. Specific to my use case, MSI have resolved two problems with this monitor. Firstly, if you choose to use the sRGB mode to have proper color space emulation for SDR content, in the original shipping firmware, this color space emulation would remain when switching over to the HDR mode, leading to a reduced color gamut, not the full 80% Rec 2020. What actually should have happened is the removal of the sRGB gamut clamp when the HDR mode is activated, which is now exactly what happens since installing this firmware, and that makes SDR-HDR switching much easier when you also want to use the sRGB mode for SDR apps. Secondly, in my original video, I noted how annoying it was that after finishing the panel protect process, the 321URX would turn off, rather than returning to its standby state. The panel protect process usually runs after 4 hours of usage, or when the monitor is next in its standby state and not being used. So with the original firmware, you finish up using the monitor for the day, you put your PC to sleep, the monitor goes to sleep, it starts running the panel protect process, then it turns off. Come back into the office the next day and the monitor doesn't wake up with my PC, I have to turn it on manually every single time using the physical power button. Again. It's a minor quality of life issue, but I'm happy to say this has been fixed in firmware 010. After running Panel Protect, the 321URX now goes back into its standby state and is ready for use again. This significantly improves one of the annoyances I was running into with this monitor on a daily basis. With that said, since my last update, I've now discovered a new annoyance, which is probably highly specific to me, and that's how the monitor will not allow you to use it if the Panel Protect feature hasn't been run for 16 cumulative hours. It's pretty unlikely that you'll run into this, but I have once or twice in my time using it, though I'm not sure if this is still the case with the latest firmware version as I haven't used the monitor for that long since updating it. But basically, if you don't run the panel protect often enough, a message will pop up on screen warning you to run it, and there's no option to make the message go away or run it at another time. The only option is to wait, which automatically runs panel protect or click to immediately execute panel protect. And when this compensation system is running, the monitor switch is black and cannot be used. I totally understand why this is being done, so that you can't just use the monitor for hours and hours without ever running its burn-in prevention systems, but this isn't something you'd ever encounter with an LCD, and it can get in the way of doing things at times. Now you might be saying, well, it's pretty unlikely you'd be using it for 16 hours straight. That's like turning on the monitor at 8 a.m. and using it uninterrupted until midnight. However, it appears like it doesn't have to be 16 continuous hours. For example, if I use the monitor for 8 hours, put it to sleep and let it run the panel protect process, then come back later and use it for another 3 hours, that's 3 hours added to the running total. Then the next day, I might come back and start using the monitor from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., which is 
still a long time, but a bit more realistic when there's a lot of work to be done in the day, that 13 hours of use gets added to the three hours of use the previous day without running the panel protect process, and then it triggers the forced panel protection system that can't be avoided. It's a minor nitpick, but I can't say I was a fan of having to sit around for about seven minutes not being able to use the monitor when I first ran into this. What I've found with the firmware update though has been positive, and this brings up another point, which is that MSI sells a version of the 321URX that has no USB ports and thus can't receive user firmware updates. It's the MSI MAG321UPX, which hopefully I'll get into review at some point. Typically, the UPX version sells for around $50 less than the URX version that I'm using that does have firmware updates. Now, based on what I've experienced with this latest firmware update, and assuming the UPX version ships with firmware that's similar to the original URX firmware, but that it can't be updated, I think it shows why buyers should want firmware updates and why they should be possible on this flagship tier of monitor. I'd be pretty frustrated if a version of the display I'd bought that was just 6% more expensive solved some quality of life issues I was running into. It's pretty rare for these sorts of monitors to come with perfect firmware out of the box. I'd love that to be the case, but it just isn't. And sometimes companies don't account for all the different use cases and configurations that buyers might run into. So I'm very happy the 321URX includes firmware update functionality, and this will continue to be a feature I look for and advocate for in reviews. All right, let's look at burn-in. After one month of usage, my 321URX had no signs of burn-in at all, which is as expected. At that point, I'd used the monitor for about 200 to 250 hours, almost exclusively with static content and productivity apps. We're now three months in, and I've used the display for approximately 650 to 750 hours. The monitor is telling me I've run 71 panel protect cycles, which equates to around one cycle every nine to 10 hours of use, which makes sense given that's about how much I'd use the monitor in a day, and I only let it run the panel protect in standby at the end of that usage. Now, I should note that the recommended rate for panel protect cycles is every four hours. So as part of my typical usage, it's running less than half as often. However, this is a totally realistic scenario for someone actually using this display for full-time work, where you probably don't want the monitor to become unusable for seven minutes or so every four hours of work. Certainly when using an LCD, it can easily cope with a full day of continuous work, so I think it's fair to expect an OLED to do the same if it were to be suitable for productivity work, only running OLED care features when it's not in use. All right, so getting into the burn-in results now, and there are some initial signs of burn-in after the three-month mark that are visible in some situations. In these uniform test patterns, there is a clear line down the center of the display that's obvious when viewing the darker gray and darker color patterns. There are also faint signs of the right side of the monitor being a little dimmer than the left side, although it depends on the pattern as to whether this can be seen. In the color pattern specifically when focusing on the dark versions, I saw little to no burn in with the blue pattern, red pattern, and magenta pattern, which here appears like a purple. Burn in was most noticeable in the green pattern, cyan pattern, and yellow pattern. And this suggests that the green subpixel is burning in at a faster rate than the red and blue subpixels, as both the cyan and yellow patterns will activate the green subpixel, while the magenta pattern, along with red and blue, will not. At the very least, the wear on the screen is more even with the red and blue subpixel components. You'll also notice that above a certain level of luminance, the effects of burn-in are invisible. Shades of grey above RGB 120, so halfway up the grayscale range, show little to no burn-in. When we get to RGB 200, it's practically invisible, as it is when viewing the full saturation color patterns. So why is the monitor burning in with this sort of result specifically? Well, I'm often using side-by-side -side applications, which explains the distinct brighter line down the center of the display. At the border of apps in Windows using light mode, there is a dark line which won't be activating the OLED pixels to as significant of a degree as the bright app windows on either side. This creates reverse burn-in where the pixels have not been used and therefore degraded to as significant of a degree as other pixels on either side, hence the brighter line. The effect we see where the right side of the screen is slightly darker than the left is likely because when using a single application, I prefer to have it snap to the right side of the display. For example, if I'm writing a script, I'll have the bright Word document opened on the right, and maybe either the darker desktop wallpaper or a darker web page on the left. 
Over time, this appears to have caused uneven wear as the app on the right is more often the lighter, brighter app. However, this is just general faint burn-in at this stage. We're not seeing any definition to this burn-in, so no burn-in of the always visible Windows taskbar or any aspects to the apps I'm usually using on this display. At the moment, this burn-in isn't causing any significant issues in terms of usability, and I actually can't notice it in any real-world scenarios except for these test patterns. Even when using an application that generally has a darker, uniform interface like Adobe Premiere, I can't spot the issue. So while there are signs of it, and that's not great, it's not at the point where it has any effect on day-to-day -day usability. What's probably the most concerning thing though is the progression of burn-in over the last three months. For example, looking at the darker gray pattern again, no signs of burn-in after one month, very faint signs of the vertical burn-in line after two months, and then a more visible line after three months. I wouldn't say the differences between each month alone are massive, but I expect this to be much more clearly visible when we look at it in another few months. Again, after three months, we're looking at approximately 650 to 750 hours of static app usage. So that's the update after three months of usage. Some signs of burn-in and some concerns for the future, but it's not directly impacting my use of the 321 URX just yet. Generally, still having a positive time using this display for productivity, and it's good to see some quality of life improvements through the latest firmware update. However, I expect the situation to be a little different, perhaps after 6 months or 12 months of use, where it seems likely that burn-in will be a more significant issue, so we'll keep checking in on this one. Anyway, that's it for this one. Very interested to hear your thoughts on this burn-in update after 3 months and whether the results are as expected, so be sure to chuck your comment in the comment section below. Also, if you want to support our independent testing and the monitor reviews that we do here at the channel, we do have our Patreon Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. If you sign up, you'll gain access to monthly live streams and Discord chats and all those sorts of things, and maybe you'll be able to fund us buying another one of these MSI monitors when eventually it does burn in. So yeah, anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.